Hey people, it is Thursday, April the 18th. The time is 4.57 in the afternoon. It's currently a fairly mild 15 degrees Celsius. And I am on Rosedale Valley Road here at the corner of Park Road. Sort of on the boundary between the north end of downtown and the Rosedale neighborhood. You can see the towers of the Bloor Yorkville neighborhood. Just over yonder. And the Rosedale neighborhood is just immediately to the north. And it's quite a contrast from one area to the other. So I'll be taking a walk through Rosedale, looking at some of the mansions in one of the richest neighborhoods in all of Canada. And it's considered Toronto's old money neighborhood. I thought I'd walk by a few houses where notable people once lived in or still live in. And the leaves aren't out on the trees yet. Normally this is a very bucolic green neighborhood but maybe we'll get a better look at some of the homes without all the leaves I often block them so the first home i'll be walking past is one that i looked at in a previous video for any music fans who haven't seen that video, you might enjoy getting a look at the house of Getty Lee from the band Rush. And I also thought I'd take a look at the former home of Gordon Lightfoot, as well as the current home of the richest person in Canada, David Thompson. It's quite a mix of housing styles. This neighborhood was built up mostly beginning in the early 1900s. And much of it was built up by the 1920s or 30s, so most of these houses are at least 100 years old or close to it. And there are some apartment buildings in the neighborhood, as you can see. And it was designed in the tradition of an English garden suburb. At that time, Toronto was very British influenced. much more so than now. And it was considered Toronto's first suburb as well. Because Toronto mostly built up in an east to west fashion along Lake Ontario. It didn't start building northward until a bit later. So this is one of the first neighborhoods to spring up north of the old original core of the city. But now it's firmly in the heart of the city as the city grew all around it. And it's a bit unique having such a neighborhood within spitting distance of skyscrapers and high density in downtown Toronto.
and it goes without saying that incomes in this neighborhood are well above average. <laughs> and housing prices are in the stratosphere. Talking millions of dollars just for a beginner home in the neighborhood. And some of the larger ones are into the tens of millions. And I believe this is Getty Lee's house, lead singer of Rush, as well as bass player and keyboard player extraordinaire. And I have shown this in a previous video, as I said. It doesn't look so huge looking at it from the front here, but if you look at an aerial view, you can see it's actually quite large. So hello to Getty, if you ever happens upon this video. Hope you're doing well. Hope you don't mind me recording a little video of your house. And feel free to join me on a walk sometime, Getty. <laughs> and more of these low-rise apartment buildings. These obviously are from a later time. Despite this being the wealthiest old money neighborhood in the city, the population density is still not high, but it's in the medium range of about 8,000 people per square mile or so. The houses do tend to be close together, as you can see. And there are quite a bit more of these low-rise apartment buildings scattered throughout the area, which add to the density. And it's also fairly well served by Toronto Transit. Several bus routes as well as a subway station called Rosedale Station over on the Young Street side of the neighborhood. I just like the different housing styles all throughout here. So this is Rosedale Road we're currently walking on. The southern boundary is Bloor Street, and the funny thing is, if you cross Bloor Street from Rosedale, you enter St. Jamestown, which is almost a polar opposite in terms of Toronto neighborhoods. It's a high density neighborhood of old 1960s era apartment towers, and it's also one of the lowest income neighborhoods in the city. One of these things is not like the other. Here's Crescent Road. It's looking to the west towards Young Street, but we're going to head east. make our way to the second home I'd like to point out, which was once owned by Gordon Lightfoot. He lived there for a fair amount of time, as far as I know. I don't know exactly how long. But it's a little ways off, so we'll just continue admiring all the homes along the way. See this tree is in bloom.
There's another awesome low-rise apartment building. This one's a bit more historic looking. As I mentioned, there's about 8,000 people per square mile, or approximately, maybe a bit more, in Rosedale. To contrast that with neighboring St. Jamestown, which has well over 100,000 people per square mile. head over Mount Pleasant Road on a bridge here. the skyline. And you can see all the way north to Young and Eglinton off in the distance. The towers way up in Midtown. I wonder what the rents are in these low-rise apartments. I wonder if they're sky high in keeping with the status of the neighborhood.
It's almost like an embassy or, so, or something. Maybe it is. Well, it's something non-residential by the looks of it. It's a Canadian flag out front. But then again, it could just be a patriotic resident. Hmm, I wanted to walk down, make sure I don't miss it. The streets are all curvy here, so you might start off walking in one direction, but before too long you're walking in a complete different direction. on the end of Sherborne Street here. That's definitely not where I wanted to go. Well, let's go back. Get a look at some of the houses again <laughs> from this side of the street. And yes, that's right, the infamous Sherborne Street extends into Rosedale. Okay, here's where I meant to go. This is Dunbar Street. That's a massive one there. I'm not consulting a map or anything as I walk around here. I'm just sort of winging it with a route in my mind and <laughs> hopefully it'll 
get me to where I want to go, my mind map. Interesting design on these ones. It's not all single family homes. Some of them are semi detached, but it definitely is much more dominated by single detached homes. And I like how the skyscrapers keep popping into view as you as you wind your way through the neighborhood. This one, is that just one house or is it two side by side? I think it's two, it has two different entrances on either end. And you can actually see some of the apartment buildings in St. Jamestown looking south. That white slabby apartment building with the balconies. Two different worlds side by side. Right now this is Glen Road. These ones are different. Semi-detached houses. Still very expensive though. I don't think that because it's semi-detached, we're gonna be paying less than a couple of million dollars at least, <laughs> if not more. Same goes for this one. And that one is a gigantic semi-detached. Each side alone is like a mansion.
Catch a bus here. Across a ravine up ahead. A number of ravines run through the neighborhood. Once we cross this bridge, we'll be moving into the North Rosedale neighborhood. And you could argue that it's even wealthier than this southern part of the neighborhood. That's quite the estate there. A view and a half. Let's see all the way over to the Don Valley Parkway. On the east end of the city, Broadview Avenue is off in that direction, as well as the Danforth. See people walking on the trails down below, or jogging, or whatever it is they do. You can see the Young and St. Clair neighborhood in the distance there with those residential buildings. And you can make out the Bloor Viaduct also off in the distance. All right, enough with the gawking at the scenery. I think we're very close to Gordon Lightfoot's old house. This is Beaumont Road. I think he lived at 5 Beaumont Road, which I believe was the first home built on the street, dating back to the 1890s, I think 1896 or thereabouts. This one looks like it's all abandoned. I guess it's having work done now. 
imagine that'll cost a pretty penny to renovate that. And what a view looking across the ravine. You can still make out all the towers of downtown. You can even make out the top of the CN Tower and a bit of First Canadian Place all the way in the financial district. I'm not sure how that will come through in the video, but I can see it quite plainly here with the naked eye. Unfortunately, this street sort of dead ends up ahead, so I'll have to turn around and head back the way I came. I think this is it. I think that's five. Beaumont Road, former home of Gordon Lightfoot. This home was quite legendary for some of the parties that would take place here <laughs> in the heyday of his career, including a party attended by Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell, and no doubt many other well-known musical legends have had a good time inside there. I'm not sure how long he lived there or when he moved out, because I know that he eventually moved to a different neighborhood. I believe he was living in the Bridal Path, which is currently where Drake has his mansion. That's in North York. stop is the home of the richest person in Canada, David Thompson. Waiting for the bus here. I wonder how many local residents use the TTC. This one looks like a wannabe castle.
Strange name for a street, Bin Scarth Road. I'm looking for a Whitney. That's the street I'll take to get over to Mr. Megabuck's house. I'm actually not sure how much David Thompson is worth. It's in the tens of billions though. For some reason, the number 30 billion pops into my head. I probably should have looked that up beforehand. Called the Thompson Empire. A far cry from its humble beginnings as a newspaper publisher in Northern Ontario, including my hometown newspaper, the North Bay Nugget. His father was, his father or grandfather, I'm not sure which, was Roy Thompson. And that might sound familiar because there's a notable building in downtown Toronto that bears that name, Roy Thompson Hall. The Toronto Symphony plays. So I found Whitney, Whitney Avenue. Some major landscaping work underway here. These homes don't seem quite as old as the ones in South Rosedale. I think that's the part of the neighborhood that was developed first. As I mentioned, the city was slow to grow northward. And I can see the house. Now the thing is, 
David Thompson bought an adjoining property. So that white house straight ahead is his home, but he also bought the adjoining house and combined them together into a single compound. And of course they extend further beyond what we can see from the street here. This is Roxborough Road, I believe, is the name of the street. And I think it's these two homes here. Or is it another one behind? I'm not exactly sure. I think it's these two homes. They seem to be connected together. serene here. Well, we made it to the home of the richest person in Canada, David Thompson. And along the way we looked at the homes, or former home in one case, of two Canadian music legends, Geddy Lee from Rush and the recently passed away Gordon Lightfoot, RIP. And we got a look at many other beautiful homes here in Rosedale, Toronto's old money neighborhood probably the most famous wealthy neighborhood in Canada so I hope you enjoyed the walk I'm gonna to start to wrap things up here so be sure to leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts on Rosedale on Getty Lee Gordon Lightfoot David Thompson or all of the above and be sure to like share and subscribe if you haven't already done so and also make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal, as well as via my merch store. And you can also support the channel by sending a super thanks if you prefer, or by becoming a channel member. And you can find me on Instagram under kcontinuum. So thanks for watching. And be sure to keep checking back, because, as always, I will continue. <laughs>